Independence has a rich tradition of producing and recording its great American story. And now new evidence has been found on the importance of storytelling, not merely as entertainment, but as an essential component of community. In 2018, anthropologist Dr. Daniel Smith of the University College London published a study of the Atka people, an indigenous hunter-gatherer tribe of approximately 1,200 people in the rainforest of the Philippines. Dr. Smith's research focused on the tribe's traditional stories that communicate values of gender equality, cooperation, friendship, and social bonding. One story is about an argument between the sun and the moon, portrayed by a male and a female, over who should light the sky. Ultimately, the sun and moon agree that one will have the day and the other the night. Dr. Smith observed that the common values expressed in the tribe's folklore has a direct connection on how members of the tribe treat one another and share their responsibilities and resources. From the earliest civilizations, storytelling has formed the social compact that establishes the community's rules of how to work together without conflict to achieve common goals. Primitive illustrations evolved to oral history and written chronicles. It's easy to imagine pioneers right here in Independence telling stories around the campfire, families who built and lived in our neighborhood sharing letters and telegrams from family far away, gathering around the radio and later watching television. Humans continue our relentless pursuit to create and consume stories by reading, talking and texting, watching Netflix, and scrolling social media. Our stories are part of our city's history and serve to transmit knowledge and values from one generation to the next. This declaration is out of an abundance of caution to ensure we can respond immediately when it is needed. March 12, 2020 began a new chapter in the independence story when I declared a state of emergency in response to the global pandemic. We were suddenly plunged into a new way of life. For many in our community, 2020 will forever be remembered as a year of loss. Loss of employment and security, tra traditions and routines, and tragically, the loss of friends, coworkers, and family members. We especially remember those who served our city with valor. Sergeant Jason Young, firefighters David Jamison, Michael Stitt, and former mayor Don Rimmel. 2020 put our community to the test and we have responded with strength and fortitude. Each day of the ongoing pandemic, countless acts of care, compassion, and cooperation take place to meet the material and emotional needs of our community through the coordinated efforts of our city leaders, our professional staff, and our volunteers. Nearly 2 million pounds of food have been distributed to families and seniors. More than $2 million of utility assistance as well as a moratorium on late fees and disconnections is helping ease worries for families coping with financial hardships. When we face budget cuts, we turn to our friends for help. The KCATA shared its CARES Act funding with us to prevent a severe reduction in bus service, ensuring citizens would have uninterrupted access to employment, education, and health care. Governor Parsons allocated over $1 million of Missouri CARES Act funding to the Independence Parks, Rec, and Tourism Department to lead regional marketing efforts to promote local tourism. These past 12 months, citizens have demonstrated a courage and creativity reminiscent of the trailblazers who throughout history have been drawn to Independence as a place where new adventures and new ideas are fostered. Our great American story passed from generation to generation includes the brave souls that found in independence what they needed to face in an uncertain future and seek a whole new world. I believe those stories formed our city for this challenge. Our community was prepared 
and adapted and moved to action. Independent citizen of all ages and walks of life sewed masks, packed food boxes, and cheered for teachers, school children, and healthcare workers with car parades and different tributes. Teddy bear hunts, sidewalk art, food trucks, driveway dinners, and portraits helped people stay connected to longtime friends and form new bonds in their neighborhoods and across our city. Civic clubs, social clubs, and places of worship adjusted to online and drive-through events. The familiar took on new importance, ensuring that the shared values embedded in the independent story were not lost, but retold during life's total disruption. The study of the Agta tribe reveals the worth of traditions and customs. They're not just amusements, but transmitters of a community's fundamental values. The 2020 editions of treasured events, like the annual holiday lighting on the square and the visits of Santa, were reimagined on virtual platforms or in socially distanced formulas. We hosted the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, the Harry S. Truman Public Service Award celebration, and the annual Martin Luther King celebration, all online. New and meaningful events were launched, like the Truman Roundtable Discussion Group, addressing issues of systematic racism and bias. The Englewood Hearts Project expanded this year to over 300 hearts, connecting the Arts District to the historic square. Chalk the Walk was introduced this year as a joint project between Englewood and the square. While these traditions may not have been the same, we found new ways to share these stories and in some cases found even greater success. The tradition of success continued in 2020 for the City of Independence. While the pandemic altered many of our planned projects, we remained focused on long-term goals and responded to the emerging needs of our citizens. The public health crisis emphasized the need for independence to reestablish our health department to provide communicable disease services. Earning recognition from the state of Missouri as a local public health authority proved to be an enormous challenge and one we believed could take years to accomplish. But thanks to an intense coordinated effort, independence was granted this important status in November of last year. As a recognized local public health authority, independence is able to set public health policy and participate in testing, tracing, and vaccination efforts to combat the pandemic in our city. The Truman Library completed its $30 million renovation and is prepared to open its doors in the very near future. The 24 Highway Bridge project that was coordinated in conjunction with the Truman Library renovation was completed, offering an improved entryway to the Presidential Library. We expanded our international relationships in 2020 by adding to our sister cities. For more than 40 years, Independence and Higashimuriyama, Japan, have maintained a cherished bond. Along with our neighbors, the city of Sugar Creek, we now have a second sister city relationship with Martin, Slovakia. Across our nation and in our community, meaningful public discourse on racial inequity and violence against black people brought awareness and attention to the need for change. Independence embraced this opportunity to examine our own attitudes and actions by calling on our diversity and inclusion task force to lead our organization in developing new policies and programs to promote diversity, inclusion, and equity. Citizen engagement reached an all-time high this year. The 2020 presidential election sparked national and local efforts to encourage voter registration and participation. Working from home and learning how to conduct business on virtual platforms has dramatically increased interest and attendance in all of our city board and commission meetings and our city council meetings. Investment and innovation in the ways we produce and share news have created a much more connected and informed community. Social media engagement has multiplied on all our digital channels, allowing us to reach more citizens, 
more often with more relevant content. Voters approved the local use tax, Prop P, in August of 2019 to fund the hiring of new police officers and the operation of the regional animal shelter. Collection of the tax and online purchases began in January of 2020, just as awareness of the global pandemic was escalating. Thanks to the voters who supported Prop P, in January we collected about $90,000 in new tax revenue the first month that we received these revenues. Today we are collecting approximately $400,000 a month from the local use tax. Provided the use tax continues on this current pace, the SAIS general fund and special tax funds, including police, fire, streets, parks, and stormwater will begin benefiting from the use tax revenues. When the campaign was launched for Prop P, it was anticipated that fully funding pets and police would not occur prior to 2039. Both will be fully funded this year. This year marks the conclusion of the Independence for All five-year strategic plan. The plan was adopted by the City Council in 2017 to create a clear, measurable set of tactics to achieve the community's most pressing goals. In its fifth and final year, most of the plan's 74 goals have been reached or are substantially underway. Your City Council has embarked on formulating Independence for All 2.0 to chart the course for the next five years. The four areas of focus remain unchanged, customer focus, quality, financial sustainability, and economy. Our adopted business plan for the upcoming fiscal year will address key concerns and opportunities to decrease and deter crime, reduce blight, and strengthen neighborhoods. We can no longer rely on our long neglected public infrastructure and aging equipment. Investment in public infrastructure, especially sidewalks and in our public utilities can no longer be ignored. These are matters of public health and safety as we saw during the rolling blackouts just a few short weeks ago. The city and our community partners are collaborating to develop housing policies that support our community's vision and offer an appropriate mix of housing types and pricing. Protecting the safety of our neighborhoods, businesses, and visitors is a basic expectation of a successful community. And as we anticipate a gradual return to activities and events in our city, the need to recruit and retain highly professional police officers that share our community values will continue to be a top priority. Dr. Smith's research on the ADCA people revealed more than the importance and tangible effect of a community story, but also about storytellers. Within the tribe, those who are considered the most skilled storytellers receive the most reward. The segments of the tribe that had the highest proportion of storytellers displayed the highest amount of cooperation, providing for one another, and even living longer lives. Though our city and many of our citizens have been shaken by the tragedies and losses of this year, we have also been stirred to service in ways we may not have imagined nor even thought possible. We are all able to be the storytellers, sharing with family, friends, and our community. Like every great story, Independence's story is abundant with adventure, suspense, triumph, and defeat, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In its telling, we ensure that the state of the city is strong and we are ready for the next challenges in the chapters that lie ahead. Thank you for your contributions to our city's story. And thank you for the privilege of serving as your mayor.